new week new day but no respite for the bulls this is not nifty 50 this is a new dashboard nifty next 50 50 percent stocks in deep red only two in green bottom varun beverages tata power pfc rec these are stocks that i hold in my portfolio so no points for guessing what was the color of my portfolio today nifty 50 not very different actually 20 percent stocks today also were in green 50 percent here also deep red one of these reds, Titan, which was down 2%. We'll talk about this stock in the nugget section today. Now, one joke on social media. Typically, Diwali is the auspicious day for stock traders. This time, Diwali and Halloween are on the same day. Story of two CEOs. This is Zomato CEO going to a mall in disguise of a delivery boy, figuring out delivery issues, sorting out with the mall management. And here is one more CEO fighting a comedian, Kunal Kamra, on social media. Literally two pigs fighting in the mud and the stock took a beating today. Perfect example of what not to do in public life once your company goes public. In today's red also, two stocks found new heights, InfoEdge and BSC. Usually these days, the entire bunch of stocks is the tail. Food and tobacco, the defensive sector, slightly green. Since there is no one else to take the top position, Metals has been running on the top spot. Note that this is a relative race. Bottom of the pack, construction and engineering and renewable energy. Now, today's fall can also be attributed to one additional factor, which is exit polls. The result will be out tomorrow for Haryana and JNK. Any weakening of the current government from where it is right now will be bad for the construction sector. Look at cement, look at construction, RVNL down 9% and the feeder sector metals that was reflecting the sentiment as well. The outcome not very different from what we have been seeing last week. 1% down for Nifty, 2% down for Bank Nifty. Nifty IT slightly up 0.7%. That's because TCS and Infosys are up ahead of the TCS results later in this week. Nifty Energy had the biggest fall, 2.5%. That's because of the crude boil. Crude is actually not much till below $80. This is an acceptable level just that it has fallen from a recent abnormal low of 72 just that people expect that the war in the Middle East will worsen. And usually when crude starts boiling, it does not stop at 8-10%. This might go till 1995 or even cross 100 in the worst case. That is what people are trying to factor in. Now if this goes back to 75, there will be a mad rush to cover the shorts. Next 50, the mid caps were down 2.3%. The SEBI chief's term is ending in February 28. This may not get renewed to end the controversies which are surrounding her. Hero Motors has withdrawn the DRHP. I have a gut feeling Swiggy also is two weeks behind. So they may also withdraw the IPO, but in that case, it will be gone for at least six months. And this will signify the end of current IPO season, probably for one year, two year, which means IPOs still will be there, but this mad rush for IPOs will subside. This is the funniest news for the day. Tech firm startups back on talent hunt after mass layoffs, hiring freeze for months. Last week, Accenture said they will not promote people. After two days, they give very good results. And then the stock went up. These are the top people, top decision makers in top IT firms. Gold is nearly at the doors of 76,000. Silver is at 92,000. After a brief meltdown, Bitcoin is again at 63,000. I saved the biggest data for the end, FIIs. They have sold $1 billion every day for the four working days in this month. 40,000 crores. DIAs have soaked in the entire supply. The question in everyone's mind is how much can DIAs soak? So DIAs primary source of money is retail. People like you and me, they get inputs from government along with obviously market conditions as input. Now when do they sell? When it is profit booking. It could be rebalancing. For example, if it is an index fund and the index constituent change, or they will have to sell when there is redemption pressure, which means if retail says, give me my money back, they typically have four or 5% in cash. If a lot of people come for their money, they have to sell whatever they hold. Even if they have to throw it on the streets, a big large gap stock to be sold on a lower circuit on a bad day. FIIs have their own will. They will buy and sell when they want. Right now they're in a selling mode ever since the new SEBI directives came in. And of course, China is looking good. Instead of counting that, we have made the exit easier for the FIIs. DIs get monthly money. It is nearly done for this month, 40,000 crores. 
DIAs may soon run out of money to be invested into the market. Retail is already frozen. The conviction is broken in just about 4% or 5% of the fall. If this was nifty since pandemic, we have hardly come down this much as of now. With bad result expected for many, many sectors and companies year on year. All right, enough of scary data. Let's get back to good one. 10 stocks up, 40 down. Airtel was up most, followed by ATC, TCS, Infi, MNM. What was down most? Adani Ports, NTPC, Reliance, SBI, HDFC Bank. Note one thing that this particular pack, Adani Enterprises and Adani Ports, this imports nearly 70-60% of India's coal consumed in the power sector or the steel sector. Adani Enterprises is a trading company. Adani Ports downloads all the coal from the ships and from there it goes to respective companies for consumption. And I expect the results of these two companies to be pretty good on this ground. Next 50, 48 stocks down, 2 up, what was up most, LTI Mindtree, Bosch, the least down, Bajaj Holdings, Divi's Lab, Dabur, what was down most, Varun Beverages, Tata Power, PFC, IRFC, REC, big cuts, 6%, 5% kinds in all these stocks, 6 consecutive red day for Nifty, trading range of nearly 2%, entire day Nifty was below this line, except this minor attempt for recovery. I'm just drawing this line once more. See Bank Nifty, nearly the same line. Trading range of 3%, which was lot higher, but again, continuously down. And literally, this went up and came down the entire distance. Overall traversal was probably more than 5% for Bank Nifty. Reliance, nearly same graph, 2.3% trading range. TCS results coming up was slightly up, half percent. ATEL has fallen a lot, that was up 1.3%. ITC was up, so was Infosys. How many times have you seen Reliance down for 5 consecutive days? That too with big cuts today also, 1.15% down. Volumes on bank stocks were pretty high, especially around this particular spike, they went up like anything. For nearly 2 quarters, I have been calling it out that I find persistent as the best stock in the IT pack. In today's market also, it was up 1.73%. Hasn't been down much in this entire series of two weeks. Emphasis and LNT tech, their volumes were phenomenal today. So if tomorrow is a bit of better day, you might see these two stocks going up a lot. Today, people just gave up on defense. HL down 2%, BL down 4%, Asgaon Dock 4%, Cochin Shipyard 5%, GRSE 8%, Data Patterns 4%. This is a sign of people dumping the stock, freeing the money, whatever is left to invest somewhere else. Metal, everything corrected. Hindustan Zing down 4%, NMDC down 3%, sale 5%, Hindustan Copper 6%. Consumption sector, ITC held the four today 1.3%. Foreign beverages cracked today 6%. The volumes are pretty high. Seems like some fund reduced their holding. Note that Varun beverages is preparing for a QIP. Most stocks that have gone through a successful QIP have seen the stocks go up. That has been the general trend in the last one or two months. Trend finally found its feet today, up 1.3%. Gillette also was up 2%. BSC made another high, but it corrected after that, down 7%. How many times do you see a stock down 7% and on the same day making a new lifetime high? All oil stocks spend the entire day below the line. No one wants to be in oil stocks right now, it seems. No respite for the power pack, they also are down below the line. Reliance power, another lower circuit, it will hit lower circuit for a week at least now. The renewable energy pack continues to crack. Look at the trend of Suzlon, SGVN, no buying at all coming in. Tata Power's numbers are looking good, still the stock was down 6%. Look at the energy pack, not a single green and very very large reds. and. Today, volumes also were decent, not on the lower side. The power pack was down 3.5%. ITC was up, but overall consumption pack was looking really, really weak. Five companies in red in aerospace and defense now. MNM was up today also 1.4%. Deep cuts in banks, especially HDFC and SBI. Coal India deep cut. Trent was down only when I wanted it up last week. Otherwise, it has been up for last 3-4 months. LIC down 4%. Big cut in a 6 lakh crore company. Siemens ABB down 3 and 2%. 5% of 
pharma down only 0.5 percent besides zomato it was looking fine four stocks still in green deep cuts in retailers titan also two percent down everyone except airtel was down in telecom in the last three days three sectors four sectors and two sectors up out of 36 i continued with the reshuffling of the portfolio one bad decision from past navneet it's a good stock but timing was pathetic Today I sold 50% of the quantity and in that I bought Varun Beverages. Varun Beverages may fall more from here, that's fine. It is a good quality stock. I am happy to buy more and more of it. Navneet also is a good stock but I will probably buy again if I want to. Somewhere around December, Q4 is their best quarter. The results would be best somewhere in April. Because of this reshuffling, lost book, so I would still put it as red. I'll talk about Titan which is a portfolio stock for me since this is a money control pro article I'll only walk you through the public part of the data the remaining you will need a subscription Q2 financial year 25 jewelry business 26% uptick watches up 20% this is year on year growth the core business is looking good this is despite the tinkering of tax rates initially Titan stock went down and then it came up it went down because there was a fear that they will be stuck with very high cost gold but then the gold prices recovered in domestic market. They are now above the mark at which they were before the duty cut. In fact, Titan has been in this business for so long they would have bought tons of gold when the prices cracked at the lowest levels and they will benefit from it in the times to come, quarters to come. At least 100-200 basis points improvement in margins. Will the demand go down because gold is now costly? My answer is no. In fact, diamond jewelry right now is out of fashion or other diamonds have cracked a lot in terms of price. So people may prefer pure gold jewelry compared to diamond jewelry. Valuation wise, revenue has been growing steadily 28,000 crore, 48, 51, 60. Next year expected 68. This is still 10% plus growth expected. This growth 51 to 60 also is way higher than 10%. EBITDA margins looking healthy, continuously growing. EPS 24.5, 36, 39, 44. Next year expected 60. This is what I was talking about. Extra margins because of the gold prices. Forward P 63 compared to 82 right now. Standard return on equity pretty much in control of everything. Return on capital employed also pretty healthy. Pretty much standard for the three years mentioned here. A lot of people see Titan as a watch company. No, it is not a watch company. They still want to grow the watch business, but it has always been a gold company. There is no competition to Titan at national level. No one can scale to Titan because Titan has taken decades to scale to current levels, pan India. If you go to places like Dubai, you will see Titan showrooms competing with Dubai showrooms there. India's love for gold is known. It is not going to go down at all. In fact, government has been kind enough to reduce the duties. So international jump in gold prices has softened actually for retail right now. SGB as an instrument is dying. As a result, investment wise, though it was not very high in volumes, the gold investments will shift at least some of the SGBs to Titan. The remaining will go to ETFs. Okay, what am I telling myself while I hold to Titan? The numbers of Titan are known to everyone. This is a published article. If you don't have Money Control Pro, take it. It is very good and very cheap. The good news is priced in. The bad news, like for example, eyewear not growing much, that is also known. Chances of run-up after results are low because everything is known. The good part is priced in. Chances of profit booking are very high. In fact, looking at market conditions, most short-term investors and traders might exit anytime. But also the stock cracked nearly 5% till result time. There may not be much shorters or people who want to book profits left. A little dicey situation, the stock actually may not go anywhere on the result day. So no point in investing for Q2 results. For long term, it is still looking fine. I would probably not add at these levels if the stock falls another 15-20% maybe because the market condition is not fundamentals. I might buy more but that will also be for long term. Hope this information was useful. There is a new video coming up which is not a daily video in which I will try to come up with 5-10 to 10 points on how to tide the current fall maybe later in the day or tomorrow. Meanwhile, stay put, enjoy the ride, enjoy the learnings. I will see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching.